Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at 10 libraries that every Blender artist should have. This industry is a deadline driven industry so it does not matter how great an artist you are if you can't complete projects on time. One render a week is not fast enough. You got to pump those numbers up. Those are rocky numbers. Try one render a day and the only way to do that is to have these assets in your library ready to use at any time. So let's look at such assets and libraries that everyone needs to speed up their workflow. Number one, a library of volume objects. You will see a lot of artists use mist or fog in their renders, so it does not hurt to have a few volume objects to help you out. A volume object is one of the most useful assets you can have. It's easy to create in Blender as all you need is a cube with a principal volume and that's it. But it gets repetitive quite easily if you have to make it from scratch every time you start a project. So you can create it once and add it to your library or if you have my quick functions add-on, I added two buttons for two types of volumes. An emissive best volume object and a density volume object. The difference is that the emissive volume object renders fast and is great for creating mist or fog that does not cause volumetric shadows. This is great for making silhouettes stand out and hiding areas with no detail in your render. A density based volume on the other hand is great for night time scenes with lights and it supports volumetric shadows. The volume can interact with lights and if you have a daytime scene you can use it to create gold rays or sun busts and spotlights. The catch here is that it adds on render time and your render can become noisy if you don't have enough volume samples. The volume object can also be used to fake atmosphere in your renders, but it's not the only way to do that. There are other ways to fake mist or atmosphere. For example, you can use an emissive plane with a gradient texture as a transparency mask. As long as the plane is far enough, it will look great and render faster than volume objects. If you want more detail like animated fog with turbulence, you may want to invest in a dedicated fog add-on with more options and functionality like easy fog. It comes with a lot of presets and templates to use. Number two, grind maps and imperfections library. Nothing in real life is perfect and squeaky clean, so nothing should be perfect and squeaky clean in your renders. Dart and grunge always collect on objects, so you should always have a set of grunge maps in your library to add grunge, dart and imperfections to your objects. Andrew Price of Polygon has a great video explaining in detail the importance of grunge and imperfection maps in your renders. These are just textures that can be added to the roughness input of your shader. It can be scratches, dents, fingerprints and more. You can find them easily by searching for grunge maps on Google, but most of the results you will get are low resolution images and under copyright. So if you want some free ones, you can get some from the Polygon website. Links are in the description. These imperfection maps can also be used as dart masks or texture masks to break up texture tiling. That's why I keep a folder of them in my texture folders add-on, which is my own add-on for managing and importing of textures inside Blender. Number three, water shader. Another asset you definitely need in your library is a proper water shader or water mesh. Water in a render can help fill up empty space or can be used to direct your composition and also captures amazing reflections in your scene. So having a good water shader in your library is a must. I have more than one water asset for different renders I'm working on depending on how close the water is to the camera. For water in the far distance like an ocean or lake or pond, a simple shader using a noise texture is enough. All you have to do is use two bump maps at different scales, blend them together with a mix node and make their movement. You can improve the shader by making the water darker and making it super reflective with a roughness of zero. If you want to render water at a close distance with a little detail, that's when you pull out the big guns like this real water shader generator. The water it creates is super realistic, has form and caustics. The only limitation is that it creates water on ground level. If you want waterfalls, fountains or more dynamic water, you will have to invest into something like uh, the water library by Polygonic. Number four, pause digital characters library. Before I start a project, the first thing I add is a human character for scale reference. You don't want to make a scene and later realize everything is off proportions. Because of this, make sure you get a correctly scaled character from reputable sites like Mixamo or download these free ones from renderpeople.com. You can also collect a few more from other sites to use in your scene as background characters and more. If you want more characters for close-up shots, that's when you invest in products like Human Generator that lets you make your own character by simply moving sliders like you are playing a Sims game. 
number five, a dynamic ground plane. Every set or render needs a ground to be set on. It can be rocks, grass, concrete, or more. Because it's faster to start from one than zero, I always keep a dynamic ground mesh that I can change depending on what I want. I can paint grass, rocks, and anything I want directly onto the vertices of the mesh using vertex paint. It's a simple setup that takes advantage of vertex painting and the color attribute node. All you have to do is use the color to determine what vertex should have which material or texture. And in the shader editor, you can separate the colors and use them as a factor to mix between different textures. Having a mesh with this shader is a must for environment artists. Number six, normal stroke height based ground. This normal height based dynamic ground works like the color based dynamic ground, but this uses either the elevation of the faces or their normal direction. You can set it up so that the slopes have a rocky texture and the flat areas can have a grass texture to mimic real life landscapes. Number seven, a bunch of grass. There are a lot of solutions for landscaping like the botanic add-on. These are really great for making full landscapes with more detail where the camera is moving and you need everything to look coherent. But for a quick render, having a bunch of things like grass instanced on a plane is a quick way to add detail in your shots without doing a lot of work. An asset like this can be made using geometry nodes of the legacy particle system. I always keep around a collection of instances for grass, weeds, and even trees for a quick forest in the background if needed. An extra touch you can add is a shrink wrap modifier so that your instances settle on whatever geometry you have. Number eight, a linked sun and sky system. Blender comes with a very powerful sky system that can create day and night cycles. The problem with this system is if you add a sun object, its rotation is not linked to the sky system, like many other DCCs like Unreal Engine or 3ds Max. It can be frustrating, especially if you want to make something quick. You have to do a lot of guesswork to get the direction of the sun or shadow cast you want. The expected behavior is to have the sun object control the sky or sun direction, which does not happen. You can easily set this up using drivers, but you have to do it every time you work on a project as you can't just drag a sun object from your library like everything else. The alternative is creating the functionality using Python, and that's what I did. I just coded the process into my quick functions add-on, so when I want a sun that is linked to, to the sky, I easily drop that into the scene with a single click. The other option is getting an add-on like physical starlight and atmosphere, which is an add-on dedicated to creating skies. This also gives you additional functions like adding static or animated clouds, god rays, and sunbursts, plus atmospheric fog. Number nine, stones and pebbles. I always keep a plane with instances of small rocks and pebbles so that I can add extra detail to my renders. It's very easy to set this up and all you need is a plane with a geometry node setup and a collection of stones and pebbles. Number 10, a height map library. Height maps are quite useful for adding quick detail without working too much. They can be mountains, sculptures, ornaments, and more. All you need is a number of height map images that can be used on your mesh. A quick Google search will avail hundreds of, of them to use so you can add them to your library and use them as much as you want. That were some of the assets I always keep around and that I would recommend to anyone that wants to pump out renders really quickly. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.